Hi again. So chapter 16 is on nutritional counseling. So we're going to learn about how to counsel our clients on nutrition. And before we step into it, or before we dive into it, we know as hygienists, we need to collaborate with other healthcare professionals. The Dietitians of Canada also recommends the same thing that um, they should also collaborate with the dental professionals so that we can promote overall health and um, so, so it works on both ends. Our main priority is our client's health. Hygienists, right? We can do everything we can to promote, um, to make sure that their oral health is good. And if their oral health is good, so no cavities, healthy gums, then their overall health will be good. And the dietitian um, also have that same mindset. All healthcare professionals, they all want to make sure that the client or the patient's health is number one. So collaboration, working with other healthcare professionals is very important. So when we as hygienists do uh, nutritional counseling, what is our goal? Why are we doing it? We're doing it to prevent or minimize dental disease. We want to prevent cavities. We want to pre prevent um, periodontal disease. So that's why we're educating them on nutritional counseling. We're promoting their oral health. We're making their oral health better. Now, clients may not realize the link between nutrition and dental health. So how eating the right foods can help their dental health, can reduce the risk of cavities, can reduce the risk of lesions, not only in their, um, in their mouth, but also on their face as well. Um, how nutrition can also reduce the impact of, uh, or cavities, nutrition can reduce cavities. Now they do know, clients have that understanding that sugar causes cavities, they do know that, but they may not know how the diet, their overall diet, how that relates to the periodontium, how that relates to the gums and soft tissues inside their mouth. So they may not know that, and that's our job. We need to educate them. Who can benefit from counseling? Honestly, everyone. Everyone can benefit from nutritional counseling, but there are specific groups that are more at risk. So if you look here, the elderly are more at risk, and that's because they have, um, they're at risk for xerostomia. And so um, we need to educate them on xerostomia and dry mouth and how that can impact and how that can lead to cavities. Teenagers too, because teenagers, they have peer pressure to look slim, uh, you know, if they're females or um, males need to be muscular. So then they eat unusual, they, their eating habits are not um, the greatest. When we look at single and independents, that's um, they spend very, these individuals spend very little money on themselves to uh, meal plan and prep. Um, convenience takes a high priority, and so because they are living alone, they don't have that desire to go out and cook for themselves, right? Because it's only they're only cooking for one person. So here we would want to remind them that well, I know you're only cooking for one person, but if you cook more. Um, it just means you won't have to cook the next day and the day after, right? So won't that be easier if you um, cook a lot and you can save it? Because these individuals don't feel like cooking because they're only cooking for themselves. But encourage them, you know, cook so that you don't have to cook the day after and the day after that. Infants, um, toddlers, and school age children, they're at high risk for cavities. Um, so whoever is doing the grocery shopping, which is probably the parents, um, we need to give the parents examples of healthy snacks versus karyogenic snacks, snacks that cause cavities. Um, we need to educate them on eating karyostatic foods, foods that don't cause cavity, like raw vegetables, um, protein, cheese. Adults who diet. So this is important because uh, there's something called the grapefruit diet, and if individuals eat the grapefruits, uh, or use the grape or follow the grapefruit diet, they can get erosion. There's also many people want to follow the Atkins diet, which eliminate all types of carbs, including the healthy fiber rich carbs, which is needed, right, for a balanced diet. So um, these individuals um, who diet would need nutritional counseling. Those that take multiple medications, that's also because xerostomia can happen and other risk factors. So we need to look into that and see how that links to their oral health. And if you notice that someone has is getting a lot of cavities all of a sudden or their teeth are getting eroded all of a sudden, perhaps we need to ask some nutritional questions as to why that could be happening. So when do you determine 
when your client needs counseling? Well, usually in the assessment phase. So when you do the assessment, you're taking all, you're gathering all this data. And if you notice that they're, you know, have missing teeth, or if they notice that they have lots of cavities, if you notice that their gingival health is not, um, you know, not the greatest, if you notice lesions inside their mouth, then maybe nutrition is playing a role. And so we need to do nutritional counseling. Some clues to look for is if you see cavities, if you see tooth loss, if you see um, angular cholitis, um, if you see a burning tongue, these are all examples of nutritional deficiencies that your client might have. If they tell you that their dentures don't fit, perhaps because they have a dry mouth. If they tell you they have a hard time chewing or swallowing. If they tell you that they're, um, they have a dry mouth, this, is, this means that their salivary glands are not working. They have sores under their dentures. So these are all clues that we need to figure out like what, what is causing that and could nutrition lack of nutrition or improper nutrition be a cause so once you figure out that your client needs nutritional counseling because you saw some issues like cavities periodontal disease um, dry mouth then we need to get consent so if you see any clues tell your client educate your client that you know um, nutritional counseling would be beneficial here we could go over some um, strategies on how we can better your oral health and overall health so explain the relationship. Remember, your patient has to be ready to make the change. So remember how um, in other classes you may have learned about the stages of change? There's pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. They need to be in the preparation stage. They need to be willing to make that change. So let's say they are willing. So you got consent. They said, okay, sure, you know, uh, let's do nutritional counseling. Let's learn about nutrition. So there are several ways you can do this. You could ask them to do a 24 hour recall where they just tell you everything they ate for the past 24 hours. This is really quick to do actually. It's um, they could like, while you're waiting for a doctor check, they could probably write down everything that they ate yesterday. Very typical to do. Um, and sorry, make sure that it, it is a typical diet. It's a diet that they usually follow. Cause sometimes what, what you can, ha what can happen from a 24 hour food recall is uh, the client might say that they're drinking Diet Coke four times a day. Well, that just probably explains why they're getting uh, lots of cavities because Diet Coke can make your teeth um, weak, right? It's very acidic. And when your teeth are weak, and uh, it can increase the chance of you getting cavities. Or if they're drinking a lot of fruit juice, right? If they're sucking on breath mints or hard candy all the time, that's also like, there's lots of sugar in that and that can definitely cause cavities. Are they eating snacks that are very sticky? This you could probably get in a 24 hour recall. A three or seven day diet diary um, is better. Okay, here we go. So a three or seven day diet diary is better because it's more in depth. Now, when they, you ask them to do a three day diary, Make sure you they include one day of the weekend, and that's because on the weekend their diet can change, right? Because they're at home now, not working, so the um, it could change. So tell them to include the weekend, so we have a better idea of their diet. And um, this is so usually if we don't see the way to figure out whether someone is twenty four hours or three day or seven day is. Um, if they had a cavity, for example, in the past three years, you probably want to do um, a three or seven day diet diary. So if you see, if you notice caries has, you know, has occurred within the past three years, they're at high risk. But if they haven't had a cavity in some time, um, you may want to do a 24 hour one. So the more severe the case, the you'll get more information from a seven day diet diary so it's always better to go with a seven day but sometimes that might be too tedious for the clients so or three day diary should be sufficient just make sure the weekend is also included okay the next part is that we must be empathetic when we are doing dietary counseling because remember there are so many barriers to eating right food um you know, they work long hours, so it's so hard to cook, so it's just easier to get fast food. They're eating alone. If they're eating alone, they're not going to take that time to cook for themselves. And so that incentive to cook is not there. It's expensive to um, buy groceries at time when they're living on a fixed income. So they're going to buy very cheap groceries, which may not always be the healthiest choice. And then, you know, convenience. It's just so e convenient to eat out and not cook. And so that could be a barrier to eating well. So work with your clients, see what they can do to um, 
you know, kind of break down those barriers that they have. And when you are talking to the individuals, what is important to note is, I'm sorry, I don't know why this is taking a long time for it to kick in, but here we go, is we want to use a non-direct approach. So a direct approach is we are just telling everyone, uh, telling the client what to do. We're dictating. We're telling them, do this, do that, don't do this, do that. And the patient is saying, okay, okay, okay. Doesn't work. It's not effective at all. Non-direct approach is way more effective where the client makes all the decision and you just guide them. And I have a video that shows you how to do that. It's called patient-centered technique where the patient is number one, the patient is deciding, you are just guiding them. So the patient is doing most of the talking and you're prompting them. Here, you're doing all the talking. The patient is just not really talking at all. But here, the patient is in control. And there's lots of ways to do this where you can get them in control. So um, you want to be non-judgmental. You want to be empathetic. You're not going to blame them at all. Make sure you're looking at them. Make sure you you show them that um, you know your body language is open. You're not like crossing your arms. You're not crossing your legs, and you're you're inviting them to speak. Encourage them. Um, if there is any criticism that, you know, let's say they're drinking five Diet Cokes or five Cokes a day, um, say that I like that you, you know, say something positive about their diet, then talk about the drinking frequency of Diet Coke or Coke, and then end it with something positive, so sandwich it. Um, that's always important. You want to leave off in a positive, uh, as a positive, um, or in a positive note. And the video that I'll show you is um, helpful. Okay, one of the things that you want, I want you guys to know is that when you are educating your client, make sure visuals are really important. So whether it be a flip chart, um, some visuals like this, this really helps. Um, so have some visual aids for them. It really enhances the learning experience for them. And then when you do the um, food counseling, the diet counseling, think about, you know, did it meet the um, Canada's food guide recommendations? Did they, did the plate, like, was it a half the plate vegetables and fruits and the other half, pro a quarter protein and the other quarter, qu quarter was um, fat, fats or carbohydrates, sorry. So make sure it follows the Canada's food guide. And Canada food guide also has some great uh, food habits to follow. Like, are they cooking more often? Are they enjoying food? Are they mindful of eating habits? Are they, um, eating with others like these are things that you need to find out and then figure out a way of how you can um, encourage them are they limiting processed food are they making water their drink of choice when you look at their diet diary do you notice that they're minimizing potential acid production so if they if their ph is always low are they eating something to buffer it out to cancel it out are they eating cheese with their meals are they eating protein milk with their meals drinking milk with the meals so that it balances out it cancels out that acid production or are they eating crunchy food that stimulates sal salivary flow so that food can wash out crunchy food could be raw vegetables like hard carrots it could be apples because that's hard it could be um xylitol gum right because gum stimul or candy sugar-free candy that stimulates salivary flow and then you want them to have foods that are rich in nutrients so that it doesn't cause any nutritional deficiencies when you make these recommendations to your client we keep it very simple and make very small changes even if their diet is really bad just start off with small changes no more than two suggestions then the next time they come in you add, you add another two for example so start off small if you overwhelm them with so many suggestions they're not going to do it at all so small changes two suggestions and then the client can decide what changes they want to do first okay so remember the client is in control if your client is of a different cultural background than um, yourself keep that in mind right because when you're making recommendations you want to make sure it aligns with their cultural um, foods you also want to make sure that when you're making suggestions of what you eat make sure those food or those fruits or whatever are in season because if you make recommendations of food that are not in season it's going to cost a lot so um price keep price in mind keep the seasonal foods in mind um when you're talking about if your client eats a lot at restaurants encourage them to make healthy choices in the restaurant and then teach them about how they can reduce the acid production so cheese protein dairy those things or um, can help with the acid production with lowering the ph 
And here are examples of how we can increase saliva in their mouth. So raw vegetables, um, apples, sugar-free candy, sugar-free gum, right? Xylitol gum can help. These are examples of food that can increase the pH. So when we're eating um, carbs or when we're eating food that can lower the pH, we need to buffer that out with cheese, with milk, with chicken, pork, beef, fish, or gum with xylitol. So those are all helpful. Now let's say you're counseling and then um, you notice that your client, so when you're counseling, remember that if you have a client that has that, that could have diabetes, eating disorders, um, such as like bulimia, anorexia, um, heart conditions, we're not going to counsel them for medical reasons. That's not in our scope of practice. That's beyond our scope of practice. This is when they really need to see a dietitian or a doctor. We are just referring them. Um, we are just, when we talk to our client, we're talking about their oral health. So we're going to talk about the acid attack, how to reduce cavities, how to improve their periodontal health. But when you have clients with diabetes, with uh, difficulty swallowing, with health issues, with eating disorders, refer them out. Okay, refer them out to the doctor and then the um, dietitian. It could also be um, for individuals that have HIV or um, for individuals that have osteoporosis, right? Um, people who are very severely malnourished. We're not going to counsel for medical reasons. Oral health is okay, but medical reasons, that's beyond our scope. So we don't want to counsel them for that. Lastly, I um, have a link here that I want to, you guys to watch. And when you open the link, it'll look like this. It's from... Um, dentalcare.com and it's um, clinic case two and what I want you guys to do is watch this video it is a nine minute video you'll see that the first half they're using a direct approach where they're not using appropriate um, techniques to educate her on nutritional counseling but the latter half is a better is how they how you, it's a non-direct approach how you should communicate with your client so you're going to see the drastic um, difference between the two you're also going to note that uh, the strategies that this client clinician is going to use is called motivational interviewing strategies and so in the video they do a good job going over how to do motivational interviewing and they'll give an example of how you can um, actually she gives lots of examples of how you, she does that with the client so please do watch that so that when you do your nutritional counseling video you have um, a sample that you can work with all right that's all thanks everyone